I'm gonna, and everyone can hear me, that's great. Thanks a lot for the video, guys. And, uh, well, I have a tablet. Yeah, of course, we can do that. And, yeah, well, okay, now it works. Okay, charging stations, that's what it looks like. Um, I have some numbers by the side. I'm uh, from the countryside by Husum, near the Danish border. That's the region where there's uh, wonderful public transportations, and that means four to five uh, per day. And that's the flat country where you really have to have a car, otherwise you can't get around. And here in North Frisia, we're quite good. The numbers show um, the goal of the federal government um, hasn't been reached yet, but we are halfway there. All right, the following is very important. There's electricity coming out of charging stations quite a lot, and it's quite dangerous. Don't touch it. And I, I brought some photos. And, okay, there's a question to the to the, the audience. Who used uh, charging stations to charge his car? And that's more than than in other congresses or conferences. Congratulations. It's not 100%, but we have to work on that. But the photos show that show how how that can look. And there are cities like Berlin who said um, charging stations have to be gray, so so you can't see them. And uh, there are some pictures showing that. And so what can happen if you make a mistake? Okay. What can happen to others if you make a mistake? And I'm calling to uh, do interesting and uh, exciting things with charging stations, but don't take away people's mobility. That would be a good thing. And mobility is about as important as the Internet. Uh, more or less important than the Internet, that's open to discussion. But here are three, three rules according, like, like the... Uh, Three Laws of Robotics by Asimov, and please uh, respect those rules. So there are five small topics. So what's the construction of an e electric vehicle, then uh, DC charging and AC charging, and how can we pay for that? So this is what an electric car looks like. Well, how how is it made? You take a combustion engine car and uh, remove the combustion engine and put in an electric engine, an electric motor. This is quite fun. And it's quite exciting because an electric motor is usually has one moving part, and that's the rotor, and there are two ball bearings. And a very important part is missing. The transmission is not necessary. That's very nice for the user because it cannot break down. There's no oil in it. And many other parts that can always break down are missing. There are no cylinder heads, no crankcase, no exhaust. We have nothing of that. Electric motors are maintenance free, more or less the thing. Uh, so everything that is part of the car, uh, that's what the industry calls all the thing that is not the drivetrain. And then we need the battery. There's, uh, in the Tesla S, there are thousands and thousands of battery cells. Okay, the motor, usually they are um, asynchronous motors, uh, no brushes, and uh, no wear and tear. And there are some ex exceptions, and if it's, if it's whining, there's a DC motor, and that will break down soon. Don't buy such a car. Uh, batteries. Um, short word about batteries. Uh, there are lead-acid batteries. They are still used because they are cheap, and you can uh, exchange them at home. Nickel-cadmium. Uh, we'll cover that with the code of uh, history. And there, in the Toyota Prius, there are still nickel-metal hydride. This is old technology and very important. If you ever heard about a Zebra battery, it uses molten salt and it has to be heated to 200 to 300 degrees, otherwise it doesn't work. There's one car using that, it's the Think City. Uh, otherwise, uh, they are used in military torpedoes with molten salt. 
and the market standard is lithium ion batteries. Uh, different variants, there are different sorts of chemistry for lithium ion batteries. They have they have different voltages and other some other properties, but that's not the topic for today. Important to know for at home is the uh, charge charging uh, voltage uh, depends on the cell type. But I didn't want to open the battery of my car because it's it's somewhat dangerous. This is the battery from an electric bicycle, and you can see. These are lithium ion cells. This is uh, type 181650. This is the length and the diameter. It's the same thing basically in the car, just a lot bigger. How can I charge such a battery? There's a, a scheme called uh, CC View. There are three easy steps. The first, uh, First, I take a whole battery, this 1,000 uh, parts, and put it to a constant uh, voltage, and put it as much voltage as I can do. At some point, we have the, uh, the final point reached, and then we ch change from constant uh, circuit to a uh, constant voltage to concert. And usually, you keep this constant voltage until it reached 1 over 10 C. What is the C? C is this uh, rate of charging. Battery calories are measured in ampere hours. When I have a battery with 10 ampere hours, when I charge it for 10, it takes one hour. This is one C. So one over 10 C is one ampere. The third part for big batteries, we have the battery management system. All these cells are a little different. And that's not good. And that's why for good batteries, uh, every cell will be put on the same level. What's the easiest way to do this? We can buy such elaborate uh, things and put into a series until we have reached this point. Some people in Schleswig-Holstein do this. That's the most cheap way. Find the station. <laughs> Find a charging station. In nowadays cars, you have 20 to 30 kilowatt hours. From this, we can calculate the, uh, the productivity. We are not talking about something for a laptop, but more kilowatts, many kilowatts. There is some uh, real thump. If your battery charge is one hour or less, then you are at a point where you have a damage of your cell. The latest results in our lab shows that this is not necessarily true. There are some uh, e-cars which can charge really fast in like 30 minutes and the cell damage is not as bad as we always thought. Charging in less than one hour, that's cool, that's one thing you want to reach. Where do I reach such a car? At home. Of course, in a charging station. These are uh, standard values. It's not clear if these are really, uh, realistic values. Where else do I want to charge them if I have a longer trip? Germans usually uh, uh, travel 42 kilometers and reach for about three days. But if I visit my ma uh, granny in Kassel, then I have to recharge my car. And it should be in the same range of like uh, having a coffee and going to the toilet. Once I'm at the destination, it doesn't need to be fast anymore. Find a charging station. This uh, charging station on a ship. There are some problems. If I want to recharge it fast, then I need a charger, which is really powerful. These are really uh, heavy and uh, expensive. First, I could do I put this into the car. This would be it's, it's expensive and heavy. But wherever I am, in Europe, we can do this almost everywhere. In the US and in Japan, it's another thing. We don't want to talk Africa. There, I can recharge my cars very fast. In principle, this would work here in this uh, building. But then my car is very expensive, and most people do not like that. 
industry of the idea, dieses Ladegerät nicht ins Auto. That's why most of the producers do not put this into the car, but put it in on a on the street and such. I think like a, uh, a filling station. And then we fill this with this. This means I need less of chargers because you can sh share them with other users. So a charging station costs about 40,000 euros. That's why you do not have money of them. It, this one is really absurd. You can imagine it's like a, ca uh, like a box, like but the size of a uh, suitcase. On one side I have AC and on, on the other side, right hand side, there is diesel coming out. People use this which do not have a fast charging station. The thing costs about 16,000 euros. That's not a really good alternative. Hier habe ich nur mal aufgeschrieben, das ist zum Nachlesen. Yeah, I wrote down some things about the uh, what what the cars can actually reach. Usually with AC it's about 3 kilowatts. Das ist die schönste Stromtankstelle zu der Nachbarn. That's the most beautiful charging station you can find. Das ist dann nun der Stecker für die That's the plug for the AC charging. Hinterher angucken. Da sind das kann man jetzt sehen, sieben Pins drin. You can see there are seven pins. Five of them are just usual uh, plugs. Three phases to uh, protection, one star. The two others are for data transmission. So what can you do about it? There's uh, electricity coming out of it. This picture is from like from you know? Why not just charging your phone in the city? Every one of us had this problem and you want to call someone and uh, the charging station in Hamburg, you can just put your mobile in there. Jetzt gibt's ein problem. Now we have a problem. You can't do this everywhere. And this is the, the circuitry if you only have a simple connection and the data protocol is extremely simple. You, see, you can see the seven pins from the type 2 and you need a diode and a resistor and I've written down the values for that. If you use that in the right way then you get electricity and that's what it looks like. And you can really uh, brew a tea during charging and the water is already steaming and there's a Freifunk router and the LEDs are blinking. Das Fahrzeug wird neben and uh, besides that, the car is also being charged. So if you have normal cars, they come with a charging cable and which have the resistor inside the cable. That's the lowest resistor. And it, it's not, doesn't go through the cable. And the cable CP with a diode, that goes through the cable up to the car. So the car can say, when and how it is being charged. And we have to look at this again. R2 says uh, that's important because the data protocol is for the normal user and it says how, what current the cable can take and that's why the resistor is in the cable. The system of car, charging station and cable has to be, can, can maximally be uh, loaded with a certain amperage and the car knows how much it can take. The cable can signal with the resistor how much it can take and what the station signals, um, I'll show that in a minute. So the station sends a pulse width modulated signal, that's always one kilohertz, and the pulse width says how much current the car uh, can take from the station and you can, you can uh, charge controlled by the cloud who has a photovoltaic system and so there are some and whenever the cloud comes and uh, the photovoltaic takes less and then whenever there's a cloud you can tell the car don't take as much current and there are some steps but there's really a linear a linear dependency and you can uh, with a second precise timing you can change that and if you want to charge overnight there is an ISO no standard, uh, which I haven't read because it's very big, and there's an open source project for that. Um, 
So this is from the practice when using this circuit, there are different uh, statuses, different states, and if you plug it in, nothing happens. And if the first resistor, then you signal that the car is there, and then you can connect a second resistor, and then you will get current. And why is that important? The state of the car is now locked uh, in the station, so little kids can't uh, pull it out. And car ready can be skipped, and you can go straight to charge now. And uh, on some stations, that is not possible. You can, with this cable, you can uh, transmit a car ID, and the car can uh, can uh, ex signal to the station where to send the bill. And with with a Type Two connector, okay, okay, for the station there is open hardware, and I uh, wrote down too. There's uh, something from the U.S. with digital technology, and that works without processor, just only with analog technology, and you can build it yourself. It's not very hard to do. And there is one with a Type Two to make uh, DC charging with a Type Two plug. And there is a method that isn't according to the standard, but uh, and that's what Tesla does. And Tesla does it the Microsoft way. They take a Type 2 connector and do something else. And these connectors are very expensive. They cost 100 euros. And uh, maybe someone from the audience can make that cheaper. There's the Open EVSE for those who want to build it. It's, it's from the US. And please, please put in an... Uh, an FI switch uh, type B because uh, the type A doesn't uh, fulfill European norms. And now here's DC charging, that's a Tesla supercharger. And please change your thoughts completely. In the house there's a transformer and a, a rectifier. And it's just a, in, in the front there's just a little plastic house uh, with a cable holder. And what happens there? The DC charging connectors in the car are really directly the battery terminals. And that's exciting. And in addition, there's also some data wires. And the car, car says, here's my battery, this much, this, this voltage, and this current. And then it transfers control to the station. And hey, the station could just blow up the battery or do something with it. And what's there? you uh, have access to the battery terminals. There's 400 volts, and you can do stuff with that. For some cars, there are ready-made products for a picnic, for the house, for a mobile home. And I uh, never I didn't think about this a lot, but there are lots of high-performance DC power stations, and you can do... Um, physical chemistry with it and, and maybe silver plate some stuff and that's what it looks like. This is uh, the Shadimo connector that's Japanese and means uh, time for a cup of tea and uh, two high performance terminals and a few data wires and one of them is actually a CAN bus. Uh, I don't know about that but some of the audience probably will. And this protocol can do up to 175 kilowatts uh, usual is 50 kilowatts. There's one car that does a little more. And you can buy the connector, but it costs more than a $1,000. Well, that's that's a pity. Uh, with, uh, e -Motor Works built a 3D model and printed it. So that's very good. And what's missing is in the Shademo ecosystem, what's missing is a, uh, a device so to tap the, the contents of the battery. And... Uh, and there's a device from Ham from a company in Ham Hamburg, but it costs as much as the battery, but it has to be cheaper. And plugs are missing, so you can uh, modify your own cars and uh, the counterpart for the car itself. And eMotor Works in the US also makes charging stations and Shadamo adapter adapter circuitry, and you can get a charging station for $4,000, but I haven't found any uh, in Europe, but they could work with European um, power supply, but uh, there's a problem with uh, deliveries. And, uh, yeah, it, it has been paid, but who looks at the Shadow Mo protocol? You can 
by the protocol for $160 uh, at the Japanese standardization organization. This is the other DC charging standard. It's called DSS, CSS, Combined Charging System, CCS. And uh, some important parts are missing, but they are high, high voltage uh, charging pins. It's uh, a German invention. And because there already was a DC charging system, Shademo, and it was possible over the Type 2 connector. And why did you invent something new? And I get, uh, get a, got the answer. Um, so they only have to have one plug, um, but you can have two. Nissan makes, makes two. And the technology is XML over IP over uh, um, system for modulating the data onto the DC signal. And you can buy the protocol here. It's a DEAN specification at the Boyd uh, Publishing Company, and there's a lot a lot else in there, and in the CCS charging system, there is really nothing available as open hardware or open software. So paying, that's a, that's a nightmare, and you can't get it free anymore. The, those times are gone, but they, these are just from Schleswig-Holstein, and uh, I... I covered the keys so nobody can replicate the keys from just from the photo. And this device, there you can pay. There are just three plugs. And most of them are RFID cards. There are thousands of them. And um, how do you get the RFID cards? You go there with the combustion engine car. And then with the combustion engine car, you go back. And then in the evening, when you really want to drive your car, you can charge it then. That's that's absurd, isn't it? And isn't there an app for that? And uh, the, the guy from NFC Gate isn't there, but there, that should be possible. There are some apps available, mainly about the system of RWE only works with apps. No one has checked them yet. From the point of view of the users, it's absolutely obvious. <laughs> We're standing at this, and the rain standing there was completely wet, and it didn't work. I bet it was a <laughs> so it's depending if you can go home only on this. That's just stupid. And then there's also roaming. So you do not have to have 20 or 30 cards. We have one roaming app, and so it would be great to have more. It's really interesting because roaming means every one of us can sell this charge without having their own station. So what about paying your uh, electricity with bitcoins until the 31st 12th? I just say that in the last uh, object, there we have, uh, you can skip this for 5,000 euros uh, entry money. So many things are broken. Many things are, are, are broken, but we have a very interesting future. That's the finishing. That's how it looks like when it comes directly from the sun to your car. And that was my talk. If you have questions, please free to ask them. Erstmal vielen Dank, Gunnar. Wenn ihr Fragen habt, stellt euch bitte an die Saalmikros. Wir haben Zeit für einige wenige. So we have time for a few questions, one from the IRC. The first question is, why aren't there in a way to pay with EC card? That's a really good question. I ask myself, ask other people, uh, why is so? And they tell me that uh, the money you have to pay for this is really expensive because uh, it costs about two, three or five euros. And it's a pity only a few people knew that this doesn't work. And that's, for example, because most of the banks, you can pay with this EC cards. Isn't it cool? Around Lörrach, there is something new. So you can pay with uh, contact-free con uh, credit cards. And in the Netherlands, from the, the Fastnet, there you can pay via your credit card. But you don't have to put it into the station, but you pay via app. There you need an app, but 
You can have free Wi-Fi most stations. Next questions from the microphone. Hello. Uh, small remark. You uh, talked about three different protocols. Um, you said um, RVE uses um, IEEE as a pro proprietary protocol. Um, so this one, even before that. Yeah, here. The IEEE 1901 is uh, specified. It specifies the green fire standard, so it's not proprietary. It's the same as CSS or ISO or the DEAN standard. And the CCS protocol, uh, there was no open source implementation. That is not quite correct. Uh, there is an implementation, OpenBTG, is compatible to to the CCS standard. Thanks, I'd like to talk with you. There's another question from the signal angel. Uh, it's interesting to know which German cars can even compete with Tesla, Tesla in uh, terms of uh, battery. None. There's one exception, Mercedes, uh, B-Class. They're comparable to Tesla because they bought it from Tesla. <laughs> Next question. Hello. Hello. You said in Germany there aren't so many electric recharging stations because they are so expensive. Or, or maybe can you say something about why in the Netherlands there are twice as many as in Germany? There are only a few about this fast charging station because they cost about 40,000 euros. And in the Netherlands there are people that just buy that. And there's a reason, because the market in the Netherlands is just five times bigger. You can see this on these numbers on this slide, number two. I brought the number, you can see there at the bottom. Uh, new numbers, new cars, it's 0.6 percentage of the cars which are bought new. Um, and in the Netherlands you have 37 percentages then eight times more people are using these charging stations. And also the, in the Norway. We have time for one short question. Yeah. A short question to the number of charging stations at the moment in Germany. Uh, do you know what it is in In Germany about 5,400. Most of them are the slow charging stations with AC. Generally in Germany, yeah, it's okay-ish. It's not luxury, but still okay-ish. It's very, it's more ba very bad if you are in Brandenburg or then Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. But in general, generally come from Brussels to Germany to Bergen. Best, uh, you can look that up on, in the internet. So, that's it. We have no time left. Thank you very much.